Ridley and I write books about uh, genetics, evolution and economics. Well, I came here to talk about uh, the uh, equivalent of sex in cultural evolution. And what I meant by that rather provocative title was that uh, there's an a very important part of biological evolution is that there should be genetic recombination between individuals to accelerate and make evolution more cumulative. And actually there's a process goes on in human affairs through the medium of exchange and trade which actually has a similar effect, I think. In other words, cultural evolution is possible in lots of species but it doesn't become cumulative until you have a, a habit of exchanging goods and services between individuals and that way bringing together ideas so they meet and mate and recombine. Uh, and that actually, in all our technologies and in all our cultures, we combine ideas and bring them together and that's what's made it possible for us to break out out as a species, I think. Uh, yes, the, the question is whether Neanderthals uh, did indulge in exchange or not. Uh, they certainly didn't have cumulative culture to the same extent that we did. They had big brains and culture and language and all these things almost certainly, but they, they didn't show the same kind of progress in tools and technologies uh, and indeed in demography that, that, that we did when we came out of Africa. Uh, now why is that? Um, it, one of the possible reasons is that they didn't have a habit of exchanging between, between groups, between strangers. So uh, they, they didn't have trade in other words. Um, uh, there's some evidence that they only ever used local materials and that would be evidence that they're not uh, not indulging in trade. But it's tentative evidence and we've got to be careful. There's some hints now that some of the early Neanderthals did actually transport things over quite long distances. So uh, it's, not yet, it's not yet certain. But I, I'm pretty sure that uh, it, will, it will turn out that the ability to exchange goods and services among strangers does have a dramatic accelerant effect on human culture. I certainly think it's true that, that the degree to which nations uh, open themselves up to the world and indulge in exchange of ideas and goods and services both within the nation and between the nations is a very important factor in how, how well those, those nations do in terms of innovation and economic growth. Uh, so for example, uh, in ancient Greece, which was a, basically all about trade, you get a flowering of culture in Renaissance Italy, in Abbasid Arabia, in Han China, in, in uh, um, uh, more recently then in the Netherlands in the Golden Age, and then in Britain in Victorian times. Trade goes hand in hand with a flowering of culture uh, and uh, an increase in innovation. Uh, and I think you're seeing that today. I mean, Hong Kong is, a, is, a, is an example of a trading entrepot that becomes very rich. Um, Japan, likewise. America, of course, is a huge success because it, it develops this marvellous internal market where there's a very free exchange of goods and services over a whole continent. Uh, and then, of course, it trades with the world as well. Yes, well, I think that uh, uh, we need to understand, first of all, what humans are and, and how they come about. And business needs to know that and understand evolved human psychology. But it also needs to understand how institutions evolve and, and to get the point that evolution isn't just about genes, it's about cultures changing, as, as, as has been argued. And, uh, and, and I think that to, to understand that a lot of these phenomena are bottom-up, uh, are emergent, are spontaneous, as it were, um, is also important. So that uh, there's too much, uh, in business generally, there's too much belief that, that the leader determines what's done and dictates what's done, instead of trying to understand how trends emerge within business and between firms. And I think that's where evolution could be a helpful perspective, is, is yeah, introducing much more of a bottom-up focus. So I think this, this NYU Stern initiative is, is a wonderful one to bring together business and evolution and economics and, and see uh, how fruitful they could be. It's been a very fruitful perspective in uh, biology and it could be in human sciences as well.